the depths of the sea slowly pulled the girl down. It enveloped her completely, not giving her a chance for salvation. With a slight smile, the young man walked towards the graceful lady. He was eager to see her. Slowly wrapping his arms around Jake, he pulled Mary close and ironically asked if she could become a sneaky toy. One day, a young lady met a demon for the first time, but still managed to escape from him. Suddenly, Miss Young remembered being roughly pushed into the seat. But Mary's torment did not end there. They continued to torment her and destroy her from the inside. The teacher's reputation is destroyed, as is the happiness she created over the years. The girl had a loving husband, Thomas, who was ready to help at any time. But soon, Jake's shadow began to deprive everyone of opportunities and then threaten. He challenged Miss Young to play a longer game than usual. Mary had to agree to his proposal because she cannot just sit while her loved ones suffer. Now she will have to pretend that she is in a happy relationship with this demon and wait for the moment to escape. The girl understood that Jake would return very soon. He appeared, pressing the defenseless woman against the wall and asked what she was up to. Young realized that Mr. Shadow is not as invulnerable as he seems. He has weaknesses. And as long as there is even a drop of light left in her heart, she will fight and never give up. Someone's measured laughter was heard in the car, which sent goosebumps all over my body. With fingers petrified with fear, the girl dialed Emma's number. Mary desperately shouted shocking news into the phone. She said that she had killed a man. On a starry night, the car was driving along the highway, picking up enormous speed. Lady Young, who was driving, told her friend that she had found a shortcut and would arrive soon. She chatted lightheartedly with Green and joked about getting engaged soon. And with a grin, she offered to film such an important moment. But soon, the girl admitted that she really missed her old friends. After ending the call, she pressed the gas pedal harder. Nothing distracted her attention from the road. But suddenly, as Mary continued driving, she noticed something strange on the edge of the side of the road. An unfamiliar guy stood over the body and actively waved his arms. Young stopped the car abruptly, so much so that smoke poured out from under the tires. Quickly opening the door, the girl hurried to help the unknown. The young lady heard a sound behind her, but it was too late. When she woke up, her head was pounding with pain. One of the guys turned to the other with a question about how exactly they would deal with the victim. The gray-haired one calmly answered, minding his own business, that it would be enough to bury it. The men unconditionally obeyed the leader and began to attack the defenseless woman. Mary tried very hard to act calm, but it was very difficult. Miss begged not to kill her, desperately trying to save her life. She even offered her car, money, everything she had to the attackers. The criminal tried to dispel all the hopes of the unfortunate woman, saying that she could no longer be saved. But the girl did not let up. She was even ready to forget about their meeting if she was saved. She turned her gaze to the guy sitting on the bags. However, he did not even think of looking up from his work and only asked his comrades to be more careful. One of the men roughly grabbed the girl by the hair and dragged her. She was pushed against a tree and pressed by the throat so that it was impossible to get out. The bandit said with a grin that he would kill Mary without suffering if she behaved quietly. He had already begun to strangle his victim, but the strap of the dress fell off the woman's shoulder and diverted the attacker's attention. Without looking away, the unknown person approached the leader with a proposal to change the method of execution. Miller, after thinking a little, noticed that now there was no time to fulfill his brother's lustful desires. Young realized that this was a chance to survive, and she offered herself on the condition that she would not be killed. The detainer assured Andrew that he would only lose a little and would not detain them. The third criminal was indignant, but no one began to focus his attention on this. The gray-haired man nevertheless allowed the man to fulfill his plan. He did not hesitate and, laughing a little, dragged the defenseless woman aside. Mary noted that it would be more comfortable in the car, which was impossible to disagree with. The bandit changed direction and then roughly pushed the fragile body onto the seat. Continuing to taunt and pressing the woman, he began to kiss her neck. And then, taking off his t-shirt, he promised that if the girl was obedient, then everything would be fine. The unfortunate woman tried to remain calm and did not resist, completely submitting. The girl noticed the key. Maybe she could do something with it. The man above her suddenly ordered her to be more active. Yang, looking at every detail, diligently tried to find something. 
Finally, her gaze fell on the wooden handle that she had been looking for with such hope. It was a knife that not so long ago my beloved husband used to cut fruit. He carefully wiped it with a cloth so that no dirt remained. Thomas put the sharp object in his pocket, not suspecting how soon his wife might need it. Mary decided to take a risky step because her strength was leaving her with every second. She tried to get a knife without ceasing to think about her family and friends. Suddenly, the girl groped for him with her fingers and grabbed him tightly. Pulling the bladed weapon towards herself, she swung it. The criminal turned cold, sensing something was wrong. Wasting no time, Young plunged the blade into the man's back with all her might. One of the bandits noticed that the couple in the car suddenly became quiet. Suddenly, the car's headlights blinded everyone around. Miller turned around and looked in the direction where the light came from. The wheels of the car whistled from the sudden movement. The car rushed towards Andrew, who did not have time to analyze the current situation. Mary, confident in her actions, grabbed the steering wheel tightly. The third criminal managed to react and pushed the leader away, but he himself fell under the wheels and was thrown to the side of the road by the impact. The girl, not realizing what was happening, pressed the gas pedal harder. The numbers on the speedometer grew with every second until they began to go off scale. The car was rushing down the road at enormous speed, the speed of which continued to increase. Finally, she reached the city, where it was at least a little safer, and began to slow down. Coming to a complete stop, Miss Young let out a loud sigh of relief. A sudden trembling washed over her from head to toe. Mary screamed deafeningly throughout the entire salon, not worrying about the fact that she could easily lose her voice. With shaking hands, she reached for the phone, which had been lying on the seat all this time. Having dialed someone's number, she pressed the green call button. Turning first to the police and then to her husband, the girl began to tell a shocking story. A huge moon, glittering red, illuminated the roadway. The car stopped right on the edge of the cliff. Miss Young tried to see the road in the distance, but she could not do it. Someone's hand banged on the front seat window, startling the brunette. It was Miller. He looked at her with hatred. The man swung his right hand sharply, trying to apply as much force as possible. Andrew punched the glass with his fist so that fragments scattered throughout the cabin. He grabbed Mary by the chin, who was already ready to lose consciousness from fear. The madman pulled back his hand, which was holding the axe to strike. The blade of the weapon quickly flashed right in front of the defenseless woman. Cold sweat flowed from the girl, which had long soaked through her clothes. Someone's hand sharply pulled back the curtain, revealing a view of the window. A bright light fell on her face, forcing Young to come to her senses. She suddenly opened her eyes and began to laugh nervously. Thomas looked at his beloved with excitement, not knowing how to help. Mary explained that she had another nightmare. The man assured that it was just a dream that Miller died three years ago. And then he happily told his wife that breakfast was ready and it was time to get up. He got out of bed and went to the kitchen. The girl looked at the person most dear to her. Young sat on the bed for a while, thinking about the events that she had been dreaming about for 48 months. She went to the bathroom and began to wash herself, trying to somehow cheer herself up. And then she raised her eyes and stared at the mirror. Mary looked at her reflection very carefully and thought about why she was living this hell again and again at night. The lady wrapped her fingers around the wedding ring and carefully adjusted it. When she was brushing her teeth, her lover opened the door and asked what was the best drink to choose. The girl, without hesitation, pointed to the coffee. And she noted to herself that she was very glad to have Thomas in her life, because he really helps her cope with difficulties. While Young tied her husband's tie, the young couple joked and laughed. The guy pretended to be a knight and played along with his beloved. Three years have already passed since Mary moved, and after her wedding, her parents also decided to move to this town and now live nearby. The girl has already completely forgotten some memories. After finishing her master's degree, she became a consultant at the university, and so far everything has been going amazingly smoothly. The student asked permission to go into the office and received a positive answer. Suddenly, the guy informed the teacher that Emma did not show up for the class meeting and had not visited the dorm since last semester. Young reassured John, saying that she would look into the matter, but suddenly the phone rang. An unknown person notified Mary that her car was parked in the bus parking lot and the car needed to be urgently moved. Miss apologized and promised to follow all instructions. The girl got into the car and drove off. The car slowly moved to the underground floor. The teacher noticed that the new parking lot was very dark. 
She adjusted the rearview mirror with her hand and then turned around. My heart began to beat violently in panic, without any obvious reason. Someone watched what was happening while sitting in their car. Miss Young got out of the car and suddenly stopped. She was at a loss, because she was the only one in the entire room. Suddenly, the stranger began to walk towards the young lady. He turned to her and asked how to get to the building of the Faculty of Foreign Languages. Mary's eyes widened in surprise and fear. A guy stood behind her. He was dressed in a smart suit and tie and had sunglasses on his face. His voice seemed very familiar. The lady carefully turned to the source of the sound, anxiously waiting to see her interlocutor. And the man she saw terribly frightened the unfortunate woman. The teacher stood in a stupor. She was overcome by fear. Yong quickly began to run away from the man, shouting something about not letting him come closer. But suddenly she tripped and fell with a crash. The stranger asked if everything was okay. He seemed to be in confusion. The girl looked at him stunned and did not take her eyes off. The guy was terribly similar to the one who still dreams of her in nightmares. Mary screamed deafeningly, shouting some incomprehensible things. But the man came even closer and extended his hand to help him stand up. The teacher crawled along the asphalt, insanely pitiful, like a wounded dog. Soon she stood up and quickly ran again without looking back. A lonely car key lay on the road. The hand of the unknown person carefully picked it up and squeezed it in his palm. He turned to the driver and asked to wait for him inside. Laughing nervously, Young raced along the sidewalk and knocked down passers-by. Quickly dialing her husband's number, she began to insist that Miller had found her. At this time, a man from the parking lot was walking up the stairs of the university. Thomas convinced his wife that she had confused the criminal with someone else, because they themselves ensured that the sentence was carried out. The gray-haired man continued to walk, and little by little made his way through the crowd. The teacher's lover asked her not to leave people's side, so that there would always be someone nearby, and promised to pick her up. Mary hung up and exhaled nervously. She quickly walked up the steps, deftly skirting the students. Yang was walking down the hallway when she suddenly stopped and noticed the girls standing outside the classroom. The woman tried to find out the reason for their presence here. She squeezed into the room and saw him. The young guy politely greeted the girl. Without hesitation, the stranger said that he was Emma's cousin, that he had arrived in order to draw up documents for expulsion. He apologized because he realized that he had somehow offended the teacher. The students watched their conversation and admired the elegant man. He took the keys out of his pocket and held them out, asking whether Mary was their owner. She thanked him and asked him to put the thing on the table, and she got ready to call her student. But her brother, having predicted the action, offered his phone. Young, stepping over her fear, accepted the object. The woman clarified the identity of the person on the other end of the line and briefly described the situation. The student apologized and explained that the doctor was not letting her out of the hospital. After finishing the conversation, the teacher looked at the guy and tried to drive away bad thoughts. She notified him that Emma still needed to fill out an application. She also clarified that she needed a diagnosis of the disease and a letter of recommendation for vacation. The man asked the woman for her number so that he could contact her without any problems. But soon there was a refusal, since you can always call the office phone. The stranger was silent for a while and politely thanked her. And then he suddenly decided to introduce himself and presented his ID. Turning around, Mary noticed a business card in his hand. There was a photo on it and an inscription that said the owner of the card was Jake Shadow. Young offered to accompany Mr., but the guy intercepted her mid-sentence. Emma's brother, with a sly smile, asked if he looked like someone, or to be more precise, on a person who caused a lot of pain. Moving away, Jake asked for his opinion on this matter, but without allowing him to answer, he turned sharply and said goodbye. The girl was riding in a car and looking out the window while her husband tried to calm her down and directed the car towards the police station. But Mary didn't even try to have a dialogue with him and just hummed quietly. The young couple was met by a police officer they knew, Michael Smith. He offered to go into the office, and at this time, Young explained the reason for the unexpected visit. Breaking into a scream, the woman began to ask him about the execution of the criminal. The guardian of law and order wanted to clarify the identity, but the teacher interrupted him, designating the unknown person as a bandit. The man remembered how he arrested the guy. The girl apologized again and told a story about a man who was painfully similar to an old enemy. She clarified all the small details, even claiming that the look was almost exactly like the one the deceased had. 
The policeman asked to calm down and sit down on the sofa. He assured that he personally interviewed Andrew, and then Smith sent him to prison for execution, which was signed by him. But then Miller did something that no one expected, and that left a deep impression. This scoundrel, right before his execution, voluntarily sacrificed his corneas. Mary looked at Michael in shock. She simply did not believe what she had just heard. Yang was confused, because that person really looked a lot like him. Thomas reminded his wife that she had seen the stranger's ID and could let the policeman check it. It dawned on the woman that, indeed, it is possible to give personal data. She took a pen and carefully began to write out the letters that soon became her residential address and date of birth. Miss asked to break through and look at this strange stranger. Smith read the notes and was surprised. He was impressed with the amount of information Yang remembered. The man began entering data into his computer, checking each letter. But what Michael saw shocked him. He agreed with the lady that this man looked a lot like a criminal. The policeman opened Andrew's photograph and began comparing people. Smith looked at the images for a long time and carefully, but soon concluded that these were two different people. Michael walked the couple to the car and assured the girl that he would double-check the specific circumstances. He also asked that if Jake tried to contact her, she would call him. By the time we returned home, the sky had already acquired a dark hue. Thomas, who was wearing an apron, carefully laid out dinner on the table. Suddenly, Mary announced that she wanted to go back to studying to be a doctor. The man said that to become a doctor, you need good training, and you can quit your job for such a goal. Young began to object, because without her there would be no money, to which the lady's beloved offered his own, because it is important for him that she does only what interests her. The woman objected because she also wanted to earn big money, but she remembered that she would be studying science. Mary jumped on her husband while he was asking her whether she wanted to have a big salary or study, but it turned out that it was both. The guy threw the teacher on the bed and began to threaten her. He began to actively tickle Mary while she laughed loudly, but he suddenly stopped and, laughing, promised that he would always love her. The girl blushed deeply at these words. The lips of the young people very slowly approached each other. They almost kissed, but were interrupted by the ringing tone of the phone. The woman felt for the smartphone and grabbed it with her hand. She greeted her interlocutor, but her cheeks were still flushed. The stranger turned to the teacher and informed her that her student John had stolen things. She asked the teacher to come as soon as possible. Mary approached the building and was amazed at how huge it was. On the upper floors, passers-by seemed like small ants. Young clarified where she should go and continued moving. The unknown person turned to her and pointed to the place where she needed to go. The teacher was riding in the elevator and talking about why John needed to look for a part-time job so far from the university. She politely apologized and said she was going to pick up the student. The girl in the suit greeted her, expressing all her displeasure. And then she stated that she found her phone number with the courier, although the food had still not been delivered. The student struggled from the guard's grip and insisted that this was not true. Mary asked forgiveness for John, but I noticed that there were no problems with him before. The stranger attacked her and accused her of being rude. She screamed and started asking someone to call the police. Suddenly, the student jumped into the conversation and began to talk about how it really happened. But very soon, he stopped short, embarrassed to continue. But he quickly gathered his courage and told how the woman tried to seduce him, but he refused. The unknown woman screamed even louder at the poor guy, claiming that he was talking nonsense. In response to the scream, someone came out from the next room. It turned out to be Shadow. Jake was surprised that the teacher was there. Suddenly, several people called out to him at once. The blonde turned to the president and accused John of stealing again. The man, as if not paying attention to her exclamations, asked the teacher if this was her student. Young introduced him and said that Emma also knew the guy as a good and decent person. Shadow stated that he trusted Mary to allow him to take the student. The girl, bowing her head as a sign of respect, quickly thanked him. She grabbed John by the wrist and pulled him towards the exit. The guys quickly approached the elevator and called it. But before they could go inside, Jake caught up with them and invited the woman to dinner. Young, clearly nervous, quickly agreed, but noted that they should have invited him as an apology. Shadow noticed this and explained that he just wanted to talk about his sister. The teacher actively tried to find a reason not to come. She even brought in her husband. And then she promised to invite him somewhere near the university. John noticed the fear emanating from the teacher. The president did not object, 
only asked to always be on the phone. There was an awkward silence between people in the salon. Finally, the girl started the engine and the car began to move. The student decided not to waste any more time and began to assure Miss Young again that he was not lying, but telling the pure truth. He explained that he was embarrassed by such a proposal and tried to quickly leave, and the blonde accused him of stealing. Mary said that she believed him, but it was too late to do anything. They would not be able to achieve the truth. She began to lecture him and tell him that some people have insidious intentions, so you need to be careful. John changed the topic and asked where the teacher would go with that man tomorrow. He bravely promised to come to the meeting place and protect it. But the girl noted that this was of no use, that he should better study. A little timidly, the student admitted that she was the best girl he had ever met. The teacher thanked him for the compliment with a smile. She convincingly asked the guy not to fall in love with her secretly because she was already married. John laughingly reproached the woman for being narcissistic and encouraged her by saying that he doesn't like older people. When Mary entered the apartment, she found her husband packing his things. Perplexed, she asked about the reason for such actions. Thomas explained that his boss called him and notified him of an upcoming business trip. Young was clearly upset by the news. The couple went to bed, but the girl could not sleep. She decided that she would tell her husband the whole truth after he returned home. In the morning, the teacher decided to look for information about Jake's shadow on the internet. But, to her surprise, she didn't find anything important. There were not even photographs of the president, so the woman assumed that he was just very mysterious. Mary walked along the university corridor, expecting Michael Smith to answer her call. Short beeps indicated that contact had not been established, but the teacher did not pay any attention to this. She dialed Jake's number and invited him to a restaurant that evening. Young looked around at the visitors and made sure that there were a lot of students in the establishment, which meant she was safe. The girl approached a separate hall and greeted the person waiting for her. Shadow said that he had already placed an order and offered to sit down. The teacher immediately moved her chair away from the table and sat comfortably on it. There was silence in the room. No one dared to start a conversation. But suddenly the president began to speak. He briefly addressed Mary, who was waiting for the continuation of his phrase. The man looked at her without opening, but still returned to the dialogue. Jake asked to tell her why she was so afraid of him. He couldn't help but notice the peculiarity of a woman's behavior when he was nearby. Young told the story of how she met a group of robbers several years ago, and that Shadow looked a lot like one of them. The president understood the situation and apologized because he scared her. The teacher hoped Jake wouldn't take it to heart. But suddenly, the mister changed the topic of conversation and noticed that the girl was very happy now. But she was not going to give up her position and drew attention to the fact that the president did not look offended by life. He answered philosophically that his business, compared to the work of a teacher, is worries. He stood up and turned his back and then turned to the woman again. Shadow wondered if Mary thought that this city was like a crafty beast and the light bulbs of all kinds of colors were confusing when one's guard was down, to which Yang only evasively replied that now this place is always bright. She also noted that most people here tend to be kind. After all, there is no point in living in darkness if there are no obvious reasons for it. Jake expressed his admiration and described her as a very interesting conversationalist. The woman simply thanked him for the compliment and asked him to return to the essence of today's meeting. The man quickly apologized and began rummaging through his bag. From there, he took out a small box, which was very beautifully wrapped with ribbon, and walked with it closer to the perplexed woman. Shadow explained that it was a small gift as a thank you. Mary tried to refuse, because she was very embarrassed by such attention. But the president assured her that there was nothing expensive there. Young nervously thanked him and began unpacking. The girl grabbed the lid and pushed it aside. Suddenly, horror appeared in the teacher's eyes. She saw a bloody photograph of the bandit whom she herself had stabbed to death. The teacher screamed loudly and threw the thing as far away from her as possible. A plate fell from the table and broke with a crash. This frightened the unfortunate woman very much. She could not even stand on her feet. Measured laughter was heard throughout the room, the owner of which was Shadow. Mary thought that her head was very dizzy. Leaning on the table, the woman stubbornly tried to get up. Still laughing and grinning, Jake asked if he liked his gift. Young was able to get her upper body onto the cloth-covered surface and called for help. She extended her hand to the president, who stood on top of her. 
The guy watched without stopping and enjoyed the spectacle. When the teacher woke up, she saw a pleased Jake. He noticed the girl's awakening and was surprised because he assumed that she would sleep for another half hour. Mary sat down on the bed, trying to come to her senses and understand what was going on. She couldn't ask normally, so she just mumbled something in response. Shadow continued to sit on the sofa. It seemed that he understood the essence of the sounds and explained that the teacher was in good health. Yang did not take her eyes off him. After a short silence, she still asked if the president was a demon. He only, mentioning all her courage and intelligence, reproached her for the stupidity and obviousness of the question. Exhausted, she wrapped her arms around her knees and hugged herself, crying, but she still asked the bandit if he was going to kill her. The man, without hiding his contempt, laughed loudly. After a while, he finally stopped and became silent. And then, as if imitating, he repeated the question. Jake said that four years ago, he really was going to deal with the teacher. She had the opportunity, but she did not take advantage of it. Shadow looked pitifully. For a second, it seemed as if he sympathized with the unfortunate woman. But almost immediately, a smile appeared. Then the man said that she no longer had a chance to choose death. The lady seemed very depressed and devastated, although she tried to hide it by covering her face with her hands. Mary asked Miller to calm down and think it over. They just need to talk intelligently. But the president didn't even think about this option. He immediately realized that it would be about liberation, about forgetting everything and starting a new life again. The kidnapped woman lowered her head and was silent, trying to think of something. Suddenly, some sparkling object strongly attracted her attention, giving her little hope of salvation. On the nightstand, not far from the bed, there was a plate with sliced apples, and a knife sparkled ominously near it. Yang immediately decided to use it if something happened. But suddenly, the guy suggested something that the teacher definitely could not expect, namely, to play a game. The girl looked at the demon incomprehensibly. She decided to find out what Jake was up to. Shadow explained that Mary has a happy family, a higher education, a job respected by other people, and a loving husband. Yang was still confused. She didn't know what was being asked of her, or maybe she didn't want to and was afraid to find out. But the man made sure that the teacher realized what awaited her. He decided to turn a lady of noble birth into a licentious, vile woman, finding it funny. The unfortunate woman was deeply shocked. She could not even imagine what evil this demon was ready to do, that even death was not enough for him. With a deft movement of his hand, the criminal snapped his fingers so that the sound instantly spread throughout the room. In the doorway, unfamiliar silhouettes began to be seen, and they clearly belonged to men. Mary reacted instantly and hit the edge of the plate. She jumped up and threw the knife, which was soon caught in the air. Young held the bladed weapon in front of her, waving it wildly, pointing the blade towards the strangers and screaming at them to stay away. Shadow quickly assessed the situation and turned towards the mercenaries. Without hesitation, Jake ordered to continue moving so that he could watch the woman kill people. The unknown people obeyed and only sped up their steps, pressing as hard as possible on the defenseless woman. The teacher continued to scream and threaten strangers in horror. The president watched emotionlessly, piercing Mary with his cold gaze. The three were quickly approaching, leaving no opportunity to hide or escape. The men jumped on the unfortunate woman and completely immobilized her. One of them roughly hit and pushed Yang towards the bed. They twisted the girl's hands behind her back and pressed her face to the mattress. The unknown person took a pill out of his pocket, clearly having a clear plan of action. He pushed the capsule with the substance into the teacher's mouth and made sure that the contents were swallowed. The victim suddenly weakened and fell to the floor while the criminal stood over her and grinned. The eyes widened sharply. Incomprehensible wheezing came from the chest. The woman fell into despair. Sweat flowed like a river. Breathing became more and more difficult. The tears flowed without stopping. Slowly, the teacher began to lose consciousness and then fell asleep. The camera lens reflected exhaustion. One of the men filmed what was happening while the other two violated Mary's body. Young sobbed and begged Miller to kill her as soon as possible because it was better to die than to experience such torment. But Jake was adamant. He said that he was not going to take her life. The girl sat on the bed, hugging herself with her arms, trying to somehow calm down the trembling that pierced her whole body. 
Shadow walked around the room and looked through the recently filmed material. The man noticed that the young lady was very photogenic, to which he received dry gratitude in response. The president approached the exhausted woman and asked if she was going to go to the police now. But Mary assured him that as long as he had such files, she could not do this, no matter how much she wanted to. The guy only agreed, finding her answer logical, and suggested moving on to the rules of the game. Leaning closer, Jake said that Young should always come when called. The woman interrupted him and suggested that if he disobeyed, the criminal would make a video of her again. But Shadow said that then he would spin around in one place, that he was already tired of waiting. It turns out that the gray-haired man intended to first force him to help with clients, because the teacher is very beautiful. The unfortunate woman just bowed her head and continued to listen to his monologue. Suddenly, the president called his assistant to take the guest home. Mary didn't even believe his words. She didn't think that she would ever be released. But the mister stopped her and promised that if she went to the police, she would be very sorry. The girl just looked blankly, not having time to ask a question, because the guard dragged her to the exit. Suddenly, he took out some kind of rag and pressed it to his face so that the substance on it got into the respiratory tract. Almost instantly, the teacher lost all her strength and sagged in someone else's arms, falling into a deep sleep. Jake stood and gloomily watched what was happening. Yang lay motionless on the bed. How she got here, and how long she had already been lying there is unknown. Finally, the woman woke up. Her strength was gradually returning to her, but she was in no hurry to change her position. Her eyes were slightly open, and from the expression on her face, it was clear that she was trying to come to her senses as quickly as possible. Suddenly, the teacher sat down, although it was not as easy as one might initially think. She looked more like some kind of dead person than a healthy person. Turning on the phone, Mary discovered that the time was already approaching 10. Thomas called a huge number of times during this time, but the girl did not answer his messages now. At first, she intended to inform the policeman about what happened to her, but apart from beeps, nothing was heard. Then the newly awakened woman put down the phone, abandoning all her attempts to call, or at least somehow establish a connection with Smith. She undressed and put all the clothes she was wearing in a vacuum bag. Young put on a gray sweatshirt, quickly packed her bag, and headed out. After a short period of time, the teacher was already driving somewhere in a taxi and actively dialing the policeman's number, but nothing new happened. She was very upset and scared that Michael never answered her. Finally, the girl got to the station and from the entrance began to ask that her longtime acquaintance be called as soon as possible. The young employee stopped the screaming woman and asked what had happened. Young began to explain that the criminal, whose name was Edmru Miller, was alive and he had returned. The policewoman, hearing the name of her colleague, sharply sank, as if she was trying to say something, but she did not have enough strength to voice the thought. But she was still able to tell a terrible story about how a valiant policeman had an accident yesterday and died. Mary was stunned by this news from Michael Smith and could not believe what was happening. She decided to ask again in case it turned out to be someone's stupid joke, really wanting to hear a different truth. However, the employee reported that the man was in a car accident, was hit by two trucks, and died almost immediately. Cold sweat poured down her body like a river, revealing her terrible condition. The teacher tried to restrain the impulses of hysteria and tried to calm down as soon as possible. Now she understood why Jake wasn't afraid that Young would go to the police. The girl began to realize that the incident with the student, the death of Smith, and her husband's departure abroad were not an accident. The trembling covered from head to toe. It was so strong that the station worker also noticed it. Mary turned around sharply and quickly walked out of the building, breaking into a run. Tonic, streams of water, the source of which was the shower, were rapidly directed downwards. On their way, they met the weak, crippled body of a woman, making it wet. Young actively scrubbed herself with a washcloth, as if she was trying to wash away the whole reality, all her bad memories. A loud cry, full of despair, burst from Mary's chest. She screamed so loudly that it seemed that she would now lose the ability to speak. The teacher beat the walls with her fists, repeating these terrible sounds over and over again. She pulled her hand back to swing as hard as possible, and then she struck a crushing blow on an innocent concrete surface. 
Tears flowed like a river from her eyes. The scream did not weaken for a second, but soon the strength quickly began to leave her body. Clouds of steam quickly rose up so that they soon completely enveloped Mary. Suddenly, the phone, which had been lying on the bedside table all this time, began to make sounds characteristic of a call. They did not end over and over again, starting a new series of periodic vibrations. Finding it was Thomas calling, Young exhaled loudly and tried to quickly calm down. She pressed the green button, slowly brought the phone closer to her mouth, and quietly said the name of her beloved. A familiar voice was instantly heard at the other end of the line. The man was very glad that he was finally able to contact Mary. He called yesterday, but when the girl did not answer, he thought that she had simply gone to bed very early. When asked where Young was now, the girl replied that she was at home, but Thomas could not hide the sadness in his voice. He noticed it almost immediately. The teacher quickly came up with a lie, and trying to somehow hold back her crying, assured her husband that she had only had a slight cold. He, clearly worried, asked to forget to take care of himself, to which he received quiet consent. The exhausted girl asked to console her. Thomas obeyed and began to talk about how much he missed him and wanted to return home. He continued to say something, but suddenly interrupted and said that he had to go now, because the next meeting would start soon. Mary leaned against the wall, cupping her face in her hands, and slowly began to slide down it until she reached the floor. Remaining in this position, she sat and cried tears full of despair and pain. Suddenly the phone vibrated again, trying to attract the attention of the owner of the thing. The girl opened her eyes slightly and tried to make out the name of the one who was now calling her. She picked up the phone, waiting for the other person to start a conversation. Then Jake's voice came through the receiver. Mary jumped up abruptly, realizing the identity of the caller. The woman was very scared. Young began screaming and assuring the criminal that she had not gone to the police. But the man only laughed ironically, because the truth had long been known to him. The teacher gathered her courage and openly decided to express her suspicions that Shadow had planned everything in advance. After all, Jake was even able to find the person who, under the guise of Mary, returned home in her car and also made sure that the cameras did not film the moment of carrying Young's sleeping body into the apartment. The girl tried to bring the criminal to revelations, asking him why he prepared the plan so carefully and found people who would play along with him. Mary sat down on the sofa, put the phone on the table, turned on the speakerphone and recorded the conversation. Suddenly, the president grinned. He began to say that he really wanted to see how Young looked now and suggested that the woman was triumphant because she thought that she had found evidence. The girl did not pay attention to his words and once again tried to provoke Jake into confessing his crimes. Mary mentally begged the demon to quickly answer her question so that he would surrender himself. But a moment later, she heard something that shocked her. Because the man asked if the teacher had turned on the sound recording, Young became nervous, and Shadow continued talking and sharply stated that there was no point in her actions, that she just needed to be obedient. Then the family may not be touched. The man noticed that his mother was now calling the teacher. He even knew that he and his father were now vacationing on a cruise ship and ordered him to pick up the phone. Indeed, her mother called her. Mary thought for a while, but still decided that it was better to answer. She immediately, very nervously, asked her parents if everything was okay and how the days were going. Mom, clearly worried about something, said that she wanted to call herself, because yesterday a terrible incident occurred on the ship. She said that yesterday, late at night, she heard a knock from her neighbors, because of which she soon woke up. And this morning, a lot of police came to them, and it turned out that someone had been killed at their neighbors. What they heard scared Young terribly. The parents were shocked. They were told that the neighbor was a foreigner, but they saw that there was something written on the wall about Miller. It seemed that the dreams had left the woman's body. The phone fell out of her hands like a stone and fell to the floor. Mary asked mom and dad to be careful, so that they were always where the most people were and then she checked the date of their return. It turned out that they were already on their way home. Young hung up. She was broken and broken because she was very worried about her family. Suddenly, the smartphone began to make sounds again and again, signaling that someone was calling. The teacher immediately realized who it was. 
She quickly pressed the green button and told Jake that she would obey him if he did not harm the family. The criminal was offended by the lack of trust. He believed that he deserved more respect. The girl clenched her teeth in anger. In such a short period of time, Shadow had already been mentally insulted by her a huge number of times. Mary returned to the conversation, and after hesitating a little, finally asked Andrew when she could finish the game. Miller only repeated her question, but did not give an answer, leaving the teacher alone with her thoughts for a while. Instead, he asked her to remember and only call him Jake Shadow, but Young didn't care anymore. Suddenly, the president changed the topic and once again stunned the unfortunate woman, informing her that now she should ring the doorbell and deliver one thing. And indeed, a loud sound of a bell was heard, meaning that someone had arrived. Mary immediately jumped up. The girl was perplexed because she didn't see or hear anyone. The corridor was completely empty. Young tried to open the door, but suddenly it hit something and did not continue moving. It was a box that was terribly frightening just by its presence, because it was sent by Jake, and this is already dangerous. The teacher quickly found a stationary knife, got rid of the packaging, and opened the box. There was a letter at the very top. It said that she needed to wear a formal dress that evening so that she could help in receiving guests. Mary squeezed and crumpled the note with hatred. She no longer liked this idea. There was a huge mansion on the seashore, in the windows of which the light shone brightly, making it clear that the house was full of guests. Suddenly, someone's car stopped nearby. An unknown person approached the back door, opened it, and notified the teacher that she had arrived. Yang came out of the car. She was dressed in a beautiful pink dress, and she really looked amazing in it. The woman headed towards the house, accompanied by a stranger. When she got closer to the garden, she found a huge number of people who were already having fun at this event. Among the crowd, Mary noticed Jake. He was clearly waiting for her and immediately waved in greeting. It should be noted that the man also looked very respectable and attractive. An elegant lady approached Shadow and stated that after the end of the evening and the completion of the game, he would immediately take her home and forget about her forever. The president did not dignify his companion with an answer, but only noted with pleasure that good things suit a girl very well. Then he turned his attention to a short, fat man who was standing not far from them and said that this was Peter Johnson. He was the client who needed to be served. The blonde quickly joined the young people and grinning greeted the miss. He quickly assessed her appearance and figure, but suddenly declared that beauty was not enough. Peter turned to the young girl and ordered her to tie up the teacher's hair. Mary sat calmly on a chair while a new acquaintance was styling her hair. Young tried to find out the assistant's name, but she was silent. The woman continued to ask the girl about Johnson, what kind of person he was, what his hobbies were. The teacher was clearly upset by this outcome of events, but did not even think of condemning her. She sighed slowly and only asked to wish her good luck, because now she would have to rely only on herself. Suddenly, heavy footsteps were heard from the direction of the door, which clearly made it clear that someone was approaching. The blonde leaned over sharply and whispered something in Mary's ear. When she finished speaking, a fat man burst into the room, but the girls managed to pretend that nothing had happened and only stared in bewilderment at the man in the doorway. Peter admired some of Yang and noted with a grin that she was divine and looked like a fairy. All the men openly stared at the teacher and discussed among themselves the fact that tonight, among all, the first-class Mary would be the best. Johnson pulled out a bottle of unknown alcohol from somewhere and boasted publicly that he was now going to drink its contents in the room with the goddess. Among the crowd of surprised faces, the teacher noticed Jake. She caught his eye and looked at them with a frown. Shadow said that if Peter wants to realize his plan, then he should hurry up, because the lady's husband is returning home tomorrow. The fat man only pressed the defenseless woman closer, and smiling, repeated the words he had just heard from the president. Jake hinted that everything needs to be done as discreetly as possible, without leaving marks on the skin, so that the spouses do not quarrel. At that moment, Mary realized that he really knew about Thomas's departure, and chose today specifically to mock her. Without missing a beat, she turned to Peter and suggested they go somewhere else, because she didn't want them to be seen. The woman came close to his face and, whispering in his ear, said that it would be dishonest if others looked and did not give money. 
One of the guards noticed that Mary was hiding something behind the belt of her dress and asked what exactly it was, grabbing her by the shoulders. The man approached the fragile lady and grabbed her tightly and pulled her towards him while his expression was stony. He immediately saw that the girl was holding something in her fist and grabbed her hand. Young did not continue to resist. She showed all the guests the contraceptive that she decided to take with her. Shadow watched what was happening. He was so shocked by Mrs. Behavior that he didn't even find what to answer. Johnson picked Mary up and said with a smile that he liked the fact that the teacher was prepared. While Peter carried her away in an unknown direction, Young did not take her eyes off the president. She understood that Jake wanted to torture her the way a cat tortures a mouse before killing him, and she promised herself that she would not fulfill his wishes, even when under the threat of death. But the criminal, it seems, did not pay attention to the girl and continued to have fun, drinking wine from a glass. Mary's mind flashed back to how the young assistant told her that Peter was a pervert and asked her to be careful. Half an hour later, the teacher rushed down the corridor, holding her cap, but it still fell. She found a sink, ran to it as quickly as possible, and began vomiting, trying to get rid of the terrible taste. She raised her head and tried to catch her breath, but out of the corner of her eye, she noticed something. It was Jake. He stood leaning on the doorframe and watched. The guy, grinning, said that he was impressed with the teacher because she was able to escape from the hands of the sadist. But he suspected that the girl used some kind of means for this, to which Young only philosophically noted that for her, the task of killing a person would be very easy. Shadow agreed with her, noting that that was why he did not kill her, because it would be too easy. The teacher turned to the president and said that it was he who was lying in front of the car four years ago and pretending to be dead. She stopped the car out of her kindness, but the criminals tried to kill her. And then, in order to save herself, she had to stab a man's friend, but she was not in debt in front of him because of this. Jake continued to laugh because he was amused by the fact that the lady was trying to negotiate again. But Mary refuted his idea saying that she could not talk about anything with cattle. She quickly approached him, took him by the tie, and stood on her tiptoes while the men stood there in bewilderment. With a sharp movement, Young pulled Jake in and kissed him. He was shocked by this behavior and could not immediately react. But as soon as he came to his senses, he pushed her away, shouting that the girl had gone crazy. Mary was sitting on the floor, but was in no hurry to get up and somehow began to smile stupidly. It was clear from her face that she was triumphant and very pleased. Shadow wiped his lips with his hand and asked the woman why she did this, suggesting that she was trying to seduce him. Young slowly began to rise to her feet and said that she would never try to seduce a guy because it was worse than seducing a dog. She explained that she just wanted the president to taste Peter Johnson too. Jake was furious. He suddenly pulled out a gun and began to aim, threatening her. The teacher did not try to hide or run away, but rather asked to kill her if the man was brave enough to do so. The criminal realized that this was a provocation and moved the barrel away from the miss's face because he was not going to end things with her so quickly. Mary said that she immediately knew that the man would be waiting for her, so she did not caress her mouth right away and left everything for him. Shadow continued to glare at the girl. He was thinking about something. The guy roughly grabbed the girl's hand, although she tried to resist and he dragged her in an unknown direction, although the teacher suspected that it was towards the exit. He continued to lead her even on the street while they quickly walked along the road. Then with a sharp movement, he pushed the woman towards the car so that she hit it hard. Jake also approached the car and opened its door. He pushed Yang inside and ordered his assistant to drive. The president again grabbed the lady's hands and wrung them above her head, pressing them against the glass. The car continued to move, accelerating faster and faster every second. Young screamed and tried to free herself from the criminal's grip, but to no avail. With one hand, he held his wrists, and with the other, he covered the teacher's mouth so that she would not attract unnecessary attention with her exclamations. Shadow came closer to the girl's face. At some point, it even seemed like he was going crazy. This only made it worse. He opened his mouth and suddenly fell to Mary's neck, biting her with all his might. When Jake pulled back, there was already a huge mark on the delicate skin, which clearly would not go away soon. The president returned to his seat and said that the teacher's husband did not often go on business trips, so he decided to leave him a gift for his return. 
Young sadly bowed her head and was convinced that Shadow was not human. The guy noticed that he invited the teacher so that she would receive guests, and not so that she would have fun and distract him. Mary exploded, shouting that it was he who suggested playing the game, but it turns out that she also had to somehow understand what exactly was required of her. Jake threatened that if next time the girl was not obedient, he would invite her relatives with him. Young was terrified, because there was no way she could allow anyone to find out what she was doing. She continued to sit motionless, with her eyes downcast, as if she had seriously offended someone. The car flew along the highway without stopping, seemingly not noticing either traffic lights or passers-by. But soon the car stopped moving and stood right in the middle of the road. The door opened sharply, and the teacher fell out of the car, hitting the asphalt hard. Shadow said that he wanted to see how Mary would get out of the situation because she was very skillful and would definitely come up with something. The driver pressed the gas again, and the car quickly began to move away from the unfortunate woman. Yang rose to her feet and tried to somehow shake herself off and straighten her dress. Nothing but sadness could be seen on the lady's face. She walked slowly along the dark street. Even the fact that there was no one around did not frighten her. As soon as Mary arrived home, she immediately washed herself, treated her wounds, and changed clothes. She took her red suitcase out of the closet, intending to put all her most necessary things into it. Thomas won't be home until a few hours later, so she has plenty of time. Yang planned to leave for a few days until the disgusting marks on her body that Shadow had left disappeared. She felt guilty before her husband, but there was no other choice. After all, if the girl does not leave home, then her beloved will also be involved in this. Then it will not be good for everyone. It was raining heavily outside, which clearly threatened to leave everyone without an umbrella completely wet. Mary went into the store and asked to sell her one used phone and a SIM card, promising to pay extra if she did not need to use an ID card. The girl was talking on the phone with her husband and telling him that the university had sent her on a business trip for several days, so she wouldn't be able to meet him today, and she really regretted it. Then she dialed the number of the director of the establishment where she worked and asked to be released for three days, based on the fact that she had a terrible accident and promised to bring a statement later asking for leave. Young hoped to find some information about Jake on the new phone because she was definitely under surveillance. But after some time, she realized that it was useless because she failed to find anything. Suddenly, a notification arrived on her main smartphone. It was Thomas who recorded a video for her in which he said that his beloved was working too hard. The woman sadly pressed the phone to herself. She really missed her husband. The teacher sent him an SMS saying that she would be back soon, so the young man should not forget to think about her. At this time, Jake's assistant monitored what was happening through the computer and reported to his boss. Shadow decided to ask if the teacher was in the hotel all this time to which I received a positive response and the name of this hostel. The president took a pack of cigarettes out of his pocket and placed it on the edge of the table. His ward instantly pulled out a lighter, intending to give the criminal fire. But unexpectedly for himself, Shadow simply sat down on a chair and declared that he would not smoke. Suddenly, the laptop began to make beeping sounds, attracting the attention of everyone around. A man with a scar on his face told Jake that Mary had left the hotel. Yang decided to take a walk outside in the rain. She tried to understand where this demon came from and why there was absolutely no information about it. Suddenly, someone called out to the teacher. The man in the raincoat was clearly shocked by such a meeting. It was John. Mary immediately asked him what he was doing here. It turned out that the guy worked part-time in the area. The student asked the same question to the woman. She said that she was going to meet a friend and sent him somewhere far away as quickly as possible. She turned around and quickly walked around the first corner of the house she came to, fearing that Jake could force the poor boy to follow her and even threaten him. The girl returned to her room, considering the possibility of wiretapping, because then Shadow would definitely know about her second phone. Suddenly, someone very actively began knocking on the door. The teacher was seriously scared, because it could be the president. But she was still able to pull herself together and first find out the identity of the person standing on her doorstep. Jake loudly and clearly, making it clear that it was him, demanded that Mary open the door. And then the lady remembered the recently purchased smartphone that was lying on the bed, which means the criminal would immediately notice it if he entered. 
She asked Shadow to wait a little, claiming that she urgently needed to change into more presentable clothes, and she quickly figured out when to hide the thing. As a result, nothing more ingenious came to her mind than putting the phone under the bed, so there were no other options. Jake didn't understand what the teacher was doing for so long, and assumed that she even decided to put on makeup for his arrival. The criminal entered the room without permission. The woman closed the door behind him and asked why he came to her at all. The man, continuing to pace around the room, explained that he had come for their meeting. He drew attention to the switched-on TV, on which, to his surprise, a romantic film was turned on. But the girl was not taken aback. She, very angry, said that she did not plan to snot, cry all day, or jump into the river to commit suicide. Shadow turned to Mary. He remembered that she took three days of vacation. It seemed to him that this time was unlikely to be enough. He pulled the neck of the sweater aside to make sure there were marks and marks, and noticed that the marks would disappear in at least a week. But Young just waved it off, saying that she would come up with a couple more excuses and continue to deceive her husband. The guy grabbed the fragile lady's hand and asked what she would do if such hematomas appeared on her body again. But the teacher objected, arguing that playing the same game was too boring. The president pressed the defenseless woman against the wall, disagreeing with her opinion. Suddenly, there were some sounds. It was the vibration of the phone, meaning that someone was calling Yang on a new phone. Jake was perplexed. He could not understand how the smartphone ended up under the bed. Mary suggested that she might have dropped it there while she was changing clothes, and the president only suggested that he answer her quickly. The woman was shocked, because there was not a single contact on this number. How could anyone even find it? She walked up to the bed, still thinking about the questions that tormented her, and decided to take out the thing. Yang knelt down so she could get as far as she could and tried to fumble for the phone. At this time, the criminal stood and watched everything that was happening in the room. But such smooth movements of the teacher especially stood out from the rest. Even Jake paid attention to them. Finally, the girl managed to find a smartphone, and the president quietly approached her. Mary pulled out her smartphone and looked to see who was calling her so diligently. She began to carefully rise to her feet, because she did not have time to regain all her strength after the previous evening. But suddenly, the back of her head hit the jaw of the president standing over her. Young exploded and started screaming at the man, because if he wanted to watch, he could just stand still. He didn't have to suddenly come up from behind and scare the unfortunate woman like that. Shadow was so surprised by the teacher's aggressive speeches that he didn't even immediately find what to answer. The woman spoke again. She said that she thought the criminal was a good guy, so he should stop constantly thinking about how to take physical revenge. Finally, the meaning of the words reached Jake. He began to understand how this situation could look from the outside. Then he grabbed her chin and said that Mary thought too highly of herself because he was not going to do anything vulgar. Shadow turned around sharply and quickly headed out of the room. When the door slammed shut, Young sat down on the bed and covered her face with her hands. Soon her peace of mind was disturbed by the vibration of her phone, which came from her pocket. The teacher picked up the phone. The caller turned out to be Thomas. Then the girl decided to pretend that everything was fine and asked about her husband's whereabouts. And then she sadly told her beloved that she really, really missed him. Three days later, Mary knocked on the door of the apartment. After a while, it opened and a human figure appeared in the doorway. Thomas rudely asked why she had returned, how she even dared to appear. Young stared blankly at her husband, afraid that he had learned the whole truth about her game with Jake. The teacher looked down guiltily at the floor. It seemed as if the girl was about to drill a hole in the floor. The man did not expect such a reaction and worriedly began to call his wife. He hugged his beloved tightly and apologized for such a stupid joke, realizing that it was not worth teasing. Mary buried her head in his shoulder and started talking about how much she missed him. Thomas was also bored and did not remain silent about it, but after a moment he was horrified at how thin the girl had lost. The guy forbade losing weight and kissed his beloved. First, the man leaned his elbows on the table in order to somehow maintain his balance and not fall under the pressure of his wife. After a while, he was already pressing Mary against the wall. A moment later, the young couple had already moved to the sofa. Thomas was surprised by such a surge of passion and asked if everything was okay with the teacher, but she quickly shut him up and only asked him to continue the kiss. 
Jake didn't have time to dodge, and for this he received a hard fist to the jaw. The enemy struck again, but this time he hit the hands blocking the blow. Even though Shadow was now in the ring, he was still thinking about Mary. He recalled how she kissed him and then declared that he was already a dog. The opponent swung again, about to strike again. The president got ahead of him and stepped aside so that his opponent missed. Taking advantage of the confusion, Jake struck him under the chest with all his might. The terrible pain completely renounced the enemy from reality, so he also missed the next blow aimed straight at his face. The image of the teacher asking him to finish her off appeared in her head again. These memories angered the man even more. He was ready to tear and throw. Although Shadow was still fighting, he was still arguing about Yang's incomprehensible behavior. He realized that the girl just wanted to piss him off so that he would kill her. The president dealt a decisive blow to his opponent, and a real demon awoke in him. Jake decided that he would never let Mary die, because death would not pay off all debts. The guy thought the teacher was too naive if she really hoped that she could piss him off so easily. Shadow's eyes glowed with madness. It instantly instilled fear in anyone who could look at him. The president's opponent was already knocked out from such a strong blow. Perhaps something was even broken in him. John trudged along the corridor alone, staring at the floor. Finally, he reached his class teacher, who immediately asked why the guy was working part-time so far from the university. It turned out that the student simply did not want to meet people from the company where he had troubles. Mary remembered that she never asked him if the delivery man knew the secretary. John said that he had already delivered food to the blonde before, so he was not worried, but suddenly she began to let go. Young continued to ask the guy, now about whether anyone knew that the student was working part-time, to which she received a positive answer. The guy remembered that Emma tried to find out which restaurant he worked in and promised to help. It dawned on the teacher. She realized that Jake had used two of her students at once to meet and get closer to her. And then the brunette revealed something that amazed the woman. He said that Emma worked as a prostitute, although he was not exactly sure of this. Suddenly, Mary received a notification on her phone. It was Shadow, and he notified her that she was participating in his banquet today. Young was sitting in the car with the president, when suddenly he took out a bag of things and told her to change clothes. Jake sarcastically asked if the girl asked her husband for time off before leaving. Of course, she again upset Thomas, saying that she had important things to do at the university. Shadow, still chuckling, apologized for disrupting the family meeting, explaining this by saying that he did not know about her plans. But Mary noticed that she would still have no choice, because she serves a criminal. Jake did not answer this, and only ordered him to quickly change clothes right in the car. The wall separating the driver from the young people slowly lowered. Young did not hesitate, and calmly began to take off her clothes without any embarrassment. After some time, she was already in a black dress that was very tight-fitting. Shadow simply, silently, watched everything that happened. He noticed that the girl had a beautiful figure and asked her to be more confident. The teacher was not taken aback and asked to stop staring, because she might think that the man wanted to sleep with her. However, the man said that he was absolutely indifferent to her thoughts, arguing this by saying that if he wants something, he will get it without any problems. Mary asked not to assign her other clients if the guy really has some plans for her that evening. After all, the girl's body simply cannot stand it a second time, and then it will ruin all his plans. The president only laughed, without deigning to answer the lady. The car was rapidly moving along the road in an unknown direction. Finally, she stopped near a high fence. The young people got out of the car and headed, presumably, towards the banquet. Seeing Jake, the boys and girls lined up in two columns so that the criminal could pass by without any problems. Someone in a red jacket called out to the president, calling him brother. He was a man of average height, with a pierced ear and combed back hair. His name was Robert Shadow. He said that he had been waiting for half a day for a relative. Shadow quickly turned around, ordered Mary to accompany him for the evening, and left. The teacher looked at the demon without showing any emotion. She stood directly in front of the stranger, looking down at the floor. The man quickly took the woman into his arms and noticed that his brother cared about him very much if he gave him the girl he came with. Jake explained that he brought the lady just for him, and her name is Mary Young. Robert frowned at his brother, clearly in shock. The guy looked and asked in surprise if it was really her. Then the teacher realized that the stranger already knew her. 
but he only noticed that he had imagined this miss differently, thinking that she would be simply beautiful since she so easily fell in love with everyone. The man was even a little happy because it turned out that the perfect appearance was not the girl's only advantage. Mary didn't understand what was happening. She assumed that Jake's brother hated her. Shadow told the servants to start pouring the drinks. Suddenly, Robert grinned, having thought of an interesting entertainment for the evening. He screamed throughout the street and asked his brother if he could do whatever he wanted with the girl, to which I received a positive response from the president. This behavior of the man greatly angered Young, but she remained silent. When the young people were already sitting on the sofa, Robert asked the teacher if she hated Jake and was not surprised to hear confirmation of his assumption. The guy suggested finding out two options on how to drive the criminal into a dead end. The teacher really wanted to get this information. The gist of the first option was that she needed to sleep with everyone present at the event. In the second, it was necessary to do the same thing, but with Shadow himself and in front of everyone. Mary was shocked. She realized that everyone around her was completely sick. The girl asked Robert if he hated his brother. It turned out that he also did not have any sympathy for him. The teacher did not stop and asked about what kind of relationship they had. The man was blushingly surprised because he thought that it was more important for her to know why he hated his relative. Young decided to try to gain his trust with flattery, saying that of the two brothers she would prefer Robert. The guy slowly finished the contents of his glass. And then he said that he didn't want women that Jake had already touched. He stated that they were all dirty. The teacher began to chuckle. His phrase really made her laugh. Mary noted that the fly should not consider the larva disgusting because they crawled out of the same hole. Robert immediately found in her words notes of teaching that made it clear about the type of her activity. The man filled the girl's glass with alcohol and handed it to her, urging her to quickly make a choice. Young accepted the glass and downed it in one gulp. She stood up abruptly, leaving the guy in the red jacket alone on the sofa. The teacher realized that these two were definitely brothers, and for some reason they hated her. But the woman still decided to trust Robert and take a risk. She approached the other girls, who had already assessed her from head to toe. Mary awkwardly asked to borrow some condoms, and then she turned around and looked at Jake, clearly hinting that she was going to use them with him. One of the persons handed over a box of contraceptives, but Young objected because she believed that this amount would not be enough. But they couldn't give her more because there was nothing left. Shadow turned to his brother, asking him to take good enough care of his body. But Robert said that he had no need for this because it was not for him to use them. The president did not like such jokes. He did not understand what was happening. Mary explained that his brother gave her two options and voiced the first one. Jake didn't take his eyes off her, waiting to hear the second outcome of events. But tears began to appear in the lady's eyes, which did not allow her to continue speaking. Shadow asked the teacher to sit next to him. She obediently came and sat down on the sofa next to him. The criminal asked his brother if he was going to leave after the banquet. Robert only asked with a smile, clearly provoking. But Jake, not paying attention, continued his reasoning, noting that his brother would still have to finish his studies. The man understood what was being said and agreed with the elder. He turned to the unfamiliar girl and ordered her to switch places with Yang. 